Joseph and his wife, Mary, came to the town of their ancestors, King David's Bethlehem, as required by the Roman census. They had to walk many miles from their home in Nazareth. Since she was pregnant, Mary rode on a donkey. The journey was long and difficult. Both were tired. Joseph and Mary asked at several inns for lodging and were turned away. They finally came to a poor innkeeper who also had no room, but he had a stable they could use. At least there was a covering. Joseph accepted, and the two of them settled on a bed of hay. When Jesus was born, he was placed in the only place that resembled a crib, a manger, you know, the spot where cows and other animals would eat. A big star suddenly appears in the sky. It seems to be shining specially for Bethlehem. It is big and beautiful, lighting up the town and countryside, almost as bright as the sun. Is it a sign of something special? It must be. Glory to God in the highest. Sing glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Sing glory to God. They chant. The shepherds, the shepherds quake in fear. Glory to God in the highest. Sing glory to God. The angels repeat and tell the shepherds to go to Bethlehem to a stable and meet and worship their king. They do so. Three kings from far off lands were watching the star for signs and they see and then follow the Bethlehem star. They came to worship the new king and bring him gifts. The first brought gold. The second, frankincense. The third, myrrh. They left and took another way home to avoid King Herod, who had asked them about the new king. The Gospel of the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated, everyone. And let's give a round of applause to our performance. So, because of our little setup here, it's a little bit hard for me to preach to all you guys. So, I'm going to do this. There's an, about enough of you that I, you all could fit up here. So, why don't all the children, if you all could stand up and very slowly or walk, rather. <laughs> Why don't you come up here to the sanctuary and you could sit down on the floor over here, okay? And if you're sitting over there, come up the little ramp here and have a seat on the floor. Could you help them all? To... All right, come around to this side, have a seat over here. Okay. All right, so why don't you all look at me, turn around there, and you face me up here. Hello. Turn around. Or not. Hmm. All right, now this is a little bit easier for me to talk to all of you guys today. So you're all very, very welcome here for the, shh, okay. What do the teachers do? They do this or something? I don't know. Whatever. Who are you waving to? You're waving to my mom? She's sitting over there. Oh, okay. Oh, your friends. Okay. Uh, hello, friends. Okay. All right. 
Boys and girls, uh, what I want to talk to you today is about how you communicate with Santa Claus. How do you guys communicate with Santa Claus? You know, I used to write to Santa Claus when I was a little kid. Sometimes I still want to. Anyways, um, well, I write to Santa Claus when I was a little kid. I'd write a letter and then I'd put it by the fireplace. I don't know why you put it by the fireplace, but we put it there and that's what we did. And my mom always said, include the newspaper clippings of the ads of the things you want, like. It's really going to help Santa. I don't know why the, she wanted that in there, but there you have it. But I guess these days, put your hands down for a moment. I guess these days, you guys communicate with Santa Claus a little bit differently. What are some of the ways you, what do you do when you write to Santa Claus? You just go to him at the store. Very good. What do you do? <laughs> you pray to Santa. Very good. What do you do? You go to your grandma's house. Okay, that's good. Oh, what? <laughs> you stay up late. Okay, that's good. I hope your parents gave you permission to do that. How are you? What? You mail it? What do you do? One last one. Yeah. You don't know what you do to write this hand. Okay, that's okay. Well, I heard a story once that there was a little girl who wrote to Santa, and she went to go meet him at the shopping mall that he was talking about. They were at Stone Ridge Mall in Pleasanton, right around the corner, not too far from here. Anyway, she went to meet Santa Claus, and she sat on his lap. I'm sorry, I'm not going to sit on your lap. That's <laughs> She went to go sit on, on Santa Claus's lap, and Santa Claus asked her that very important question. What do you want for Christmas? And the girl looked at him, her mouth dropped, and she started crying. <laughs> and she started crying, and the poor Santa Claus didn't know what to do. He's like, what do, what do I do? This girl's crying. That poor man. Well, the girl looked at him and said, Santa Claus, how dare you? How do you not know what I want? The list that I sent you, I put it up on my Facebook account and Twitter and Instagram and all my social media things. And poor Santa didn't know what to say, so he says, oh, the internet in the North Pole wasn't working. So I don't know. <laughs> There's many ways to communicate. We communicate by speaking. We communicate by our cell phones. We communicate by our social media and all that kind of stuff. But today, boys and girls, Jesus, God our Father, speaks to you. And he speaks to you not on a computer. He speaks to you in a person. And do you know who that person is? Jesus! Oh, okay, yeah. So who does God, who, how does God speak to us? He speaks to us in a person. And who is that person? Jesus. Who? Jesus! I can't hear you guys. You're all talking. Who? Jesus! Okay, very good. Very good. By the way, I thought it was pretty funny how Deacon Rigo just picked up the baby Jesus doll and just handed it up. The... <laughs> but this little baby, the baby that sits in that manger over there, the baby that sits over there, that baby is our God. And that baby is going to love you very, very much. No matter where you go in life, no matter what you do, that little baby is going to take care of you. Because that baby is who? Jesus. Is Jesus. And Jesus is our God. And so, boys and girls, what I'd like you to do today is I'd like you to get to know him and to love him and to take him into your life. You got that? So who is it that we celebrate today? Jesus! Okay, now, if you could all just be a little silent right now, because I'm going to speak to the adults right now, because the adults are at church too, and i got to speak to them. I know some of the men right now, and some people are looking at their cell phones because the Raiders are playing right now. Um, who are they playing anyway? I don't know they're going to lose. So... Uh, <laughs> And I'm wearing Niners colors up here, too. I, uh... <laughs> I 
And the next time they play, they're gonna lose too, anyways. <laughs> it's true! <laughs> anyway, now in all seriousness, everybody, in all seriousness, will each of you, will each of us, will we let Jesus into our lives today? Will we? Will we let Jesus in? I want to tell you guys a little story. During my time here, I've done many funerals and such. And some funerals I forget, but there was one that stuck out. This one, it was two sons, adult sons, that were burying their father. They were from another state, and they came here to have the funeral. But the thing that was weird was that one son sat right over here, and the other one sat over there. They never got along. They never talked to each other. They argued with each other. They had to meet with me separately. And then when they got up to speak about their dad, they all like snickered at each other. It was so bad that they even had separate receptions. No peace there. Well, earlier this month, one of the sons wrote a letter to me. And I want to read to you what he wrote. Okay, okay boys and girls. This is what he wrote. Dear Father, you probably don't remember me, but you did my dad's funeral back in 2013. At the time, I hated being a Christian. I thought this whole Catholic thing was a joke. But Father, I wanted to let you know now that about a year ago, I was diagnosed with cancer. At first, I was angry with God. I was depressed. Treatment was rough and I couldn't do all the things that I used to do. But I remembered something, Father, that you said at my dad's funeral. You said that Jesus is looking for me. You said that Jesus wants me to be with him in heaven. Well, a few months ago, I started going to Mass with my wife. She doesn't nag me anymore, which is pretty good. We're both active at our church, and we help the poor at the St. Vincent de Paul Society. For the first time I went to confession, it felt great. Then the man continued, Father, God is faithful. All you have to do is let him in. P.S. For the first time in 30 years, I'm spending Christmas with my brother. Do you see that? Do you see how wonderful our life could be if we let Jesus in? Brothers and sisters, glory to God in, on, in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. And I hope it rests on each of you today and forever. Boys and girls, you're gonna have to help me. Who is it that comes to save us today? Jesus! Yeah! And will you let him into your lives? Yeah! Very good. Now, this is going to take a little bit of a challenge, which is why I'm probably regretting having you come up here, but that's okay. I need you all to stand and walking, only walking, you'll walk back to your seats, okay? See you next year. I'll see you on Sunday. That's what I'm doing.